Over the course of the past decade, film camera prices have been on a rocket ship to the moon, just like GameStop after Wall Street bets got a hold of them. But why is this happening to film camera? Is it the Russians? Aliens? George Soros? What do these rapidly increasing prices mean for the hobby? And what can we do to get out of this mess? Stick around, and we're gonna try to get to the bottom of it. First, let's take a look at some cameras and see just how much those prices have went up over the past few years. Let's start with the Laka M6. Not that I'm thinking about buying one or anything. So let's take a trip to the Bay of E. We can see right at the top one for $3,999, one for $2,995, one for $10,000. That's in box, it looks like. $2,848, $2,476. So it looks like a gently used Laka M6 is hovering between about $2,500 to $3,000. Now, how does that compare? So I'm using a website called Collective Blend, and lucky for us, the Laka M6 is an item that they've tracked. And you can see we've got this graph that really starts to go up. It says the average price in 2017 was $970. Looks like 2018 it was $1,150. 2019, $1,270. And then 2020, $1,290. Those are not the prices reflected on eBay. And yeah, if you go down, you can take a look at a list of some of the auctions that they're using to kind of gather this research. And you can see they give it a condition grade, B, A minus, C, whatever, and what that auction sold for. Going back to 2015, there's one here that sold for $1,083. What a deal for a Laka M6. And again, we've looked at eBay and the going right now seems to be about $2,500 to $3,000. So the prices on these have really, really went up. Something else that's kind of interesting is that this website doesn't seem to take into account the COVID pandemic years yet. It seems like the site cuts off at about 2020. That's something to think about as well. So that's the Laka M6. You can see the prices have went way up on that. Let's take a look at another one. So the next camera I want to take a look at is the Mamiya 7.2. So we'll go back to eBay here, top it in, see what we can get one for today. I'm gonna fool around and get gear acquisition center really bad. I'm just kidding, not that I didn't already have it. So yeah, here's a Mamiya 7.2. looks like the bid price is $3,018 and it has two bids on it, so it's gonna sell. Buy it now price, $4,199. Another one, $4,999 in champagne gold. How classy is that? Um, another excellent condition Mamiya 7.2 with a 150 millimeter lens and Pelican case, $4,600, $4,300 here. It looks like you're gonna be very hard pressed to get a Mamiya 7.2 um, under $4,000 at least at this point. So let's go back to collect the blend and you can see these prices. Again, these prices are only through early 2020, February 2020. And you can see the prices were easily into the $2,000 range. There was one for in 2021, um, body only sold for $3,000. So it looks like though the Mamiya has been just largely expensive for a while, but you can see the, the going rate, at least on collective blend, seemed to be about $2,000 to $3,000. Now the going rate seems to be more like four grand. So the trend still holds. What about something a little more consumer grade, like the Nikon FM2? Back to eBay, one more time, FM2. Ooh, 700, and, oh, that's the F3, whoo! FM2, 299, 298. 240, $200. And that's about what I would expect to pay for a knock-on FM2 these days. But let's take a look at Collective Blend. So the knock-on FM2 prices, those have been much more stable. The Laka M6 prices are significantly higher. The Mamiya 7 prices are significantly higher. So now that I've put my laptop away, a couple things now that I've looked at that data just a little bit. It seems like the price increases are more heavily concentrated on the top end of the market. It seems like more consumer grade casual cameras haven't been affected as much by the increased prices. So why are the prices of these really high in premium baddie cameras going up, seemingly disproportionately to the consumer grade cameras. Well, one factor that we can surely attribute to this is inflation. So that's, a, that's a very boring answer, but that is something to point later on. One thing that I was deliberately hiding when I was showing you the prices on Collective Blend is that those prices have been adjusted for inflation, which tends to make all of the graphs look a lot flatter. That's why there wasn't the big price increases shown on the Nikon FM2. But that doesn't take into account those anomalies that you see on the Mamiya 7 and the Laka. M6. So the basic economic principle of inflation helps explain away some of the price increases that we're seeing. And I know inflation is something that you hear in the news and you've heard it on the radio a lot recently, but inflation is something that's around every year. It's just we've had a lot more of it over the past year. Inflation is always ticking, even if it's not at the same 8-9% clip that it has been the last year. So another reason I feel like these prices have probably went up disproportionately is due to what we're doing now. 
making YouTube videos. There can be no mistake, if you spend five minutes on YouTube, you're gonna encounter videos from fantastic YouTubers like Willem Verbeek, or Matt Day, or, or Kyle McDougal, or Granny Days, all these guys. Far and wide, they're using a lot of the same cameras. I think every one of those dudes at some point had a Leica M6 on their channel and a Mamiya 7. So one reason that the process of these cameras are really hot is that they're really good cameras. These cameras that these guys are shooting are the best cameras in the world. So I think that's another thing that you can attribute to the process of these cameras. All of our favorite YouTubers are creating thirst traps for the Leica M6 and the Mamiya 7. And what do we do? We run on eBay and buy them. And these are likely the best film cameras that will ever exist. I don't know if you knew this or not, but save for Laka, no one is making really good high-end film cameras anymore. There is no Mamiya 7.3 or a Hasselblad 600 CM. The freaking awesome film cameras that exist are likely to be the only awesome film cameras ever made. We're all having a really good time going back and shooting film and enjoying the medium, but make no mistake, digital cameras are here to stay. The workflow is too easy. So all that's to say, we have a fixed supply of these very high-end premium cameras no more are being made. So we're all fighting over this finite amount of film camera. And what happens over time, folks are shooting them, they're taking them out, they're beating them up, and they're breaking. So not only is the supply of these amazing cameras fixed, but the supply is constantly shrinking as well. So where in the world do we go from here? Well, I have a couple of suggestions. First, we should all become lawyers. Scratch that. Dentists. Dentists. So we can afford to buy Laka cameras. Like I said, they are still making new film cameras. In all seriousness though, that's not a very realistic solution for most of us. So what else could we do? Well, we could suck it up and keep paying the prices that we have been. So an, I know for a lot of folks that's not a very realistic solution. But there is a third way. So that would be for enough of us to keep shooting film and supporting film so that maybe a camera manufacturer will finally take notice that there is demand and create a brand new, modern, professional film camera. I think that's the option that we all want here. We want camera manufacturers to jump back on board. The film revival has been fun and awesome, but at some point it's going to die if we don't get newly manufactured cameras at some point. The Nikon FM4, or like I said, the Hasselblad 600CM or the Mamiya 7.3. How awesome would that be? Or if Fuji recreated a nice medium format film camera based on their new GF series. Could be autofocus. It could use the same lenses. Just give us a back that'll let us slide a roll of 120 film back there. It would be great. So in my mind, that's the option that we all need to be working toward. I think that's the only real way for film photography to grow and thrive over the next couple decades. So what do you guys think? A few months ago, I dropped over a thousand bucks on a Contax G1. Let me know in the comments what the most expensive film camera you bought is. And check out this video where I talk about how one film manufacturer has helped bringing film back to life. Thanks for watching.